is our map fragment and we're going to have a load map implementation down here that's going to go in and it's going to load the map and we have some helper methods to hide the map uh, to set the visibility for the list view and in here is where we have if you remember in the slide deck how we we need to wait for a uh, for the map to to show up right here so now that you can see the um, uh, the button in the toolbar or in the navigation bar to swap back and forth now we're actually going to load the map uh, so we could view a map and get things going there so we're going to go to uh, going to set this up so we're going to load the map here we're going to set a map uh, the map fragment to load it up we have some helper methods in here uh, to uh, to hide the map uh, when we want to swap in and out of the list view and we want, want to set the list view visibility uh, over here now the item where uh, when the option menu is, is selected then we want to actually swap things out so we uh, go in here we have a switch statement uh, that just looks for uh, the title of the uh, of the option uh, button item and then if it's a map view we want to show into uh, into list view and then if it's a list view we want to we want to swap it out so essentially we're doing the same thing as we're doing in iOS and we're swapping in and out of list view and map view so I'm going to run this all right so we've we've, we've taken that button we, what we just did is added the functionality behind that button to make it come alive and, and then we can switch back and forth between the lists and the maps. Yes, exactly. Right. All right. So let's see that in action. Yeah, so right now it's just compiling. And there it goes. And again, big build because we're using the maps. Yeah, it takes a little bit longer on this at this point. It's almost there. And there it goes. There, so we got the same thing. We'll tap the map button. We'll swap over to the maps. And there you see we have a map. So the next step is now to actually show the pins. So we're going to stop that. And then we're going to change our load map implementation with with this right here so here what we're going to do is we're going to uh, load the map if it's null we're going to create a new instance here we're going to do our callback to make sure we have a map item and then uh, we're going to wire up the map info click uh, so whenever whenever an item is clicked it will, it will uh, notify us, and we can set the intent to navigate to the details page. And then we're also going to loop all the properties, uh, all the property items that we have loaded. So I'm going to just fix these up here. So here you see we just loop them, uh, set the position, set the title, and add the marker. And then we have a, a method called uh, zoom and center on map. Um, so we call the callback, just keep calling it until the map is actually ready and then we, uh, we can zoom and center in on the map here. So here again, we just do a task, uh, task thought delay. We want to run on the main UI thread, uh, you know, because we coming from a background thread. And we're just going to loop all the items and we're going to set the, uh, the camera update to zoom in on all the items. Right, so this is what you were talking about where there's, uh, the map may not be ready, so we're just kind of putting that in that callback to make sure the map's ready as we go to draw these things out. Exactly, exactly. And one, one way I found effective is just to create a task, uh, continuously call that task until the map is actually, is actually available to us. So here, uh, we've ran the application. I'm going to swap over to the map view. And see, we're gonna have a bunch of push pins. And we are going to tap on one and we could see 
the details. Swap over back to the list, and we could see the details in there. So now we have a same application similar to iOS on Android sharing code. Uh, and, you know, we still have a lot of, you know, UI based code, Ooh, not there. Uh, some UI, yeah, some UI based code, you know, a lot of specific to Android, a lot specific to iOS uh, th that we want to uh, potentially get rid of. And, uh, you know, we started using uh, list views and uh, map views and things like that and intents to navigate between applications. And in the next module, uh, essentially what, what we'll be looking at is how to minimize a lot of that UI code uh, using Xamarin Forms and sharing even more code than we're doing right now. All right, so that brings us to the end of module three. Yep. And uh, in module four, like, like he said, we'll, we'll do uh, Xamarin.Forms and actually get even more code reuse out of, uh, out of our code, uh, building a common uh, UI across all the platforms. Exactly. Welcome back. This is Brian Sherwin and Mark Tega, and we're looking at cross-platform development with Xamarin and Visual Studio. This is Module 4, and we're going to dive into Xamarin.Forms. Yeah, and we're also going to be doing a little bit more code sharing. So Xamarin.Forms was uh, recently introduced in May of 2014, so it's still fairly new. Uh, you know, we've, uh, we're going to be going through it here, showing some uh, code sharing techniques, and what we're going to cover is uh, what exactly it is, what, are, what, what do you require, uh, some of the controls that are available, uh, some sharing code. Uh, we're going to do portable class libraries. We're going to do MVVM uh, patterns and dependency injection. And we're going to rebuild the heritage property app from the from the previous modules using Xamarin.Forms. We're also going to see how we can extend Xamarin.Forms using custom renderers uh, to provide us extra functionality within our application. So with uh, Xamarin.Forms, essentially, uh, it's it's still compiling down to, uh, to native code uh, using ahead of time compiling on iOS and just in time compiling or jcompiling on, on Android. Uh, but what it gives us is it gives us the ability to share even more code uh, from uh, in the UI, uh, from the UI and our uh, shared code such as services and models into one PCL or shared project. So our PCL will have here and then our iOS, Android, and Windows applications, our Windows phone, can access the PCL and it could build out, uh, you know, it could use the shared models, it could use services, uh, view models, or anything like that. Now, Xamarin Forms, it allows you, again, to share the UI. So it's, it's even more code sharing end-to-end uh, -end on the different platforms uh, to, to have less platform-specific code uh, that you have to maintain before your application. So we're increasing our code reusability by using something like Xamarin Forms so that we're not creating that UI-specific stuff that we've done up to this point in the, in the previous two modules. Exactly. In the previous two modules, you would have noticed that you know, we have a lot of UI-specific code for Android and iOS. Uh, Xamarin Forms is going to allow us to take that away, uh, but we still have flexibility to create some custom renderers within, uh, within our application if we need to. So now... With Xamarin Forms, you're going to have your, uh, you're still going to have platform-specific uh, projects within your Visual Studio solution. Uh, but what you're going to share is the interface code uh, through Xamarin Forms, and you're going to have your view models and models, so your shared app logic, like we did uh, uh, in the previous modules. But this is all going to be contained in your either a portable class library or a shared project. Now, some of the requirements that you need. Uh, so on iOS, it requires 6.1 plus. Uh, so if you want to support anything below that, uh, you're not going to be able to use Xamarin Forms. Android 4.0 plus. And on Windows Phone, it's, it requires uh, Windows Phone 8, uh, the Silverlight. WinRT is not supported at this point. So some of the, the controls that you have available in Xamarin Forms are split into four sections. So you have pages, you have layouts, you have views, and you have cells. So your pages, you're going to have content pages, master detail page, navigation page, tab page, and these relate all to the native underlying uh, 
multi-platform uh, classes. For example, in, in iOS, it's UI view controller. In Android, it's activity. And on the Windows Phone platform, it's a page. So these will, these will actually render down to the native controls. And then on layouts, you have some other uh, layouts is how you're going to uh, put your controls within your forms, and it's going to lay it out in a certain way. So you're going to have uh, stack layouts, absolute layouts, relative layouts, grid layouts, uh, scroll view, frame, and content view. So these are, you know, so, some of them are similar to what you have in, in XAML. Uh, so if you're familiar with that, you should be familiar with uh, uh, what Xamarin Forms provides. And so Xamarin Forms is actually built on XAML, right? So this is going to be, if you're familiar with XAML, you should be able to come to Xamarin Forms with that same feel of, yeah, of XAML. Exactly. So it is built on XAML. Uh, you'll have that same feel. There are some slight differences, uh, but not too many that it will, uh, you could still use. Uh, if you're familiar with XAML, you could use it with Xamarin Forms. All right. So if we're doing controls that are specific to each device, how, do, how does that look? So once we uh, get the controls going, so what the controls they're called in Xamarin Forms, they're called views. Uh, so views are the different controls that are going to be rendered. For example, here you have a daytime picker. So one of the key things to note here is a daytime picker looks, or a date picker on iOS looks like a date picker on iOS. On Android, it looks like one on Android, and on Windows, it looks like one on Windows. So Xamarin doesn't try to do a, it try to render it themselves. Uh, Xamarin Forms actually goes down into the native layer and renders the native controls depending on which platform it is. So it, it's not like a, uh, uh, you know, jQuery Mobile or something like that where it's trying to render something something the same across all the different platforms. It's going to look like it belongs on the platform. Great. So these are these are controls that are all created the same way, but they're developed to look underneath uh, or when when they're actually presented to the user, they're going to look like the user expects them to look on their native device. Exactly. Great. Exactly. And I think that's one of the key features of uh, Xamarin Forms. So you also have cells. Uh, if you want to put a cell in a, uh, a table view or anything like that, or text entry cell, uh, you could enter those cells and grab data from the user if you need to. So we'll, we'll be using a few cells. And as we mentioned, it's, uh, it's based on XAML. Uh, so you can, uh, if you're familiar with XAML, you can use it. There's also a data binding engine built into Xamarin Forms. So if you've used uh, data binding on the Windows or Windows Phone platform, um, you know, you could use the same data binding techniques uh, with Xamarin Forms. Great. Well, can we take a look at it? See how it looks? Sure. So let's go into the demo. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. Let me just close this one down. And we're going to create a new Xamarin Forms project. So here you see it's under Visual C Sharp. We're going to select Mobile Apps. And we're going to just call it Heritage Properties again. And I'm just going to put it under this directory. So I'm going to select the blank app, uh, Xamarin Forms Portable App. And then I'm going to click OK. So now we're starting with a completely new project because we're gonna, the way we're going to approach this is going to be different now that we're sharing the UI across all the platforms, right? Exactly, exactly. So all our UI is going to be within our PCL now. Uh, so our PCL is going to contain our, our services, our models, and everything that we need from there. So back into the project, we're going to go in, and you'll notice that Xamarin Forms creates four projects for us. So we have a portable class library, and we're going to have an Android, an iOS, and it also creates a Windows Phone version for us. So right out of the box, you could target three platforms at once and share all your code within your portable class library. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to add our icons. So I'm going to set the properties for our application. And again, it's, it's the same type of application. I'm going to switch this to iPhone, iPod instead of Universal. And just take that off. And I'm going to set the the icons from here. So here, 
you go in, and the reason I'm showing this is because it's the same as what you did before. So it's still creating a native application. Um, and you still go in and you set your icons as you did before in the past with uh, a non Xamarin Forms app. So I'm going to skip. I'm just going to set some splash screens here, right here. And the last one down at the bottom. So I'm going to save that. And then we're going to want to do the same for iOS and Android. Uh, so for, or for iOS and, or Android and Windows, actually. So Android, we can just drag those folders into our resources, and, and Android picks those up just by convention yep. or the icons. Yeah, it'll pick those up. And then on Windows, uh, we could actually do the same. Uh, we just have an assets folder with the right icons in there. All right. And, and so Windows is, again, picking those up by convention. Exactly. All right. Just delete that. And you see here, and it'll just 